If you're brand new to color management, this is the best video ever. By the end, you're gonna understand what it is, why we do it, and how to do it the very best and practical way. If you wanna follow along, there is a link down below where you can download this media. It's called Color Grading Practice Clips. Download this and unzip it into a folder on your system. Take all of these clips and just drag them into the media pool of an empty Resolve project. It's gonna ask if you wanna change the frame rate, just say change. That'll load them all here in the media pool, select them, right click and choose create new timeline using selected clips. I'll hit create. And here we have a bunch of clips all laid out in a timeline. And you can bring this into the color page and practice all kinds of color grading and color management and goodies like that. So click that link to download these clips right now. And then you can go ahead and pause the video and we'll carry on once you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it? Okay, good. So here we have a whole bunch of different kinds of footage all laid out on the same timeline. And I took the liberty of labeling this footage with the color profile it was recorded in. All right, so we have all kinds of stuff. We have stuff from Sony, from Red, from Ari, from Canon, from Panasonic. We even have Rec. 709 stuff. What the heck does all of that mean? Well, let's talk about it. First major concept with color management. Color management is really all about recreating what the camera saw in real life. Is this real life? So for instance, we have this scene. Let's say that it looks like this in real life. The camera records the scene in a certain way. It makes an image from that scene. Color management is all about getting this end image to look like what you saw in real life. Because when a camera records an image, it generally will record it in one of two different ways, either in Rec. 709 or Log. You could think of Rec. 709 as kind of just a normal looking image. By that, I mean it has good contrast. That means black things are black and white things are white. It has good saturation. The colors look nice and bright. And there's nothing really weird about it. It looks like normal video. Rec. 709 is the technical term for an image that looks good on screen. There's other technical mumbo jumbo, but we don't need to get into it. A log image looks like this, looks nasty and gray. It does not have good contrast. The black things are not black, the white things are not white, and the colors are pretty desaturated. Now we could spend a lot of time on the reasons for this, but it's good enough to say that when a camera records in this mode, it can store more information, a bigger range of brightnesses and a bigger range of different colors. It's sort of like taking all of the colors from real life and kind of compressing them down into this kind of gray, ugly looking image. And so your camera will either record Rec. 709, so kind of a normal looking image, or a log image. Color management is mostly a factor when it comes to log images. There's reasons you would color manage Rec. 709 stuff too, but most of the time we're talking about dealing with log images. Why is that? Because again, color management is trying to make the image on the screen look like real life, and Rec. 709 more or less already kind of looks like that. If we shoot in log, it doesn't look like that, and we need to figure out this part right here. This is where color management happens. So back here in Resolve, we have all of this footage, and a lot of this is shot in log. So this is log, this is log. You can tell because it's ugly. This one is Rec. 709 because it's not ugly. Same thing. This game footage, Rec. 709. This face cam footage, Rec. 709. Log, 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 log. And so in order to make this log footage look good on our screen, we need to do some adjusting. Now, if you know anything about color correction, I'll just hide some of our interface here. It'd be really tempting to take an image like this and just start messing with some controls to fix the problems that you see. For instance, it doesn't have enough contrast, so let's push some contrast in there. It doesn't have enough saturation, so let's grab some saturation and put that in there. And we can play around with this image and mess with it with some tools that we might know about and have it end up looking pretty good. So if I disable this color, here's before, log image, ugh, and then after, looking pretty good. But this isn't color management. The technical term for this would be called manually jacking with the colors. And it's not really the best idea, here's why. If your camera is recording in log, it's taking this image and it's making some changes to it. And it's doing that in a really specific kind of way. You can kind of think of it like this way. Each camera has a certain set of instructions that it uses to kind of build that log image. And every camera is going to do it in a slightly different way. A Canon might have a certain way that it builds that image, but a Blackmagic has a different way it does it. And a Sony has a different way of doing it. 
All of these little instruction books for each camera are different on how it builds that log image. The technical term for these kind of things would be a color profile. So a Canon might use something like C-Log3. Blackmagic might use BMD Film. And Sony would use something like S-Log3. It's all like a different instruction book for each camera. And what color management does is kind of looks up the instruction book that this camera used and reverses it so that the image on screen is really close to the image that the camera saw in real life. It does it technically, scientifically, with numbers and junk, which means that it's pretty darn exact. I like to think of this with a tent analogy. Say you buy a new tent from the store. That tent will come in a sack, and it'll be rolled up and taken apart, and it's just kind of like all the pieces for the tent. But they didn't just throw a bunch of pieces into a bag. What they did at Tent Co. was they made a really cool tent, and then they broke it down in a way that fits in that bag. And so if you want this result, if you want to make a nice tent again, you can take it out of this bag and set it up in a couple ways. One, you can read the instructions, which if the instructions are good, it'll give you a tent that is very similar to what was intended because you follow the instructions, right? Now, if you're like me or most dads, <laughs> you probably figure you can put the tent together yourself and you, you know very well how to put up a tent. Thank you very much. I don't need somebody telling me exactly how to do it. And what you end up with is sometimes something that looks kind of like a tent and will functionally totally work as a tent. You might even get pretty darn close to something that looks like this. Maybe you missed this little part. Maybe you don't have this flap totally right, but it's still pretty close, but it's not the same. It's not exactly like the tent is supposed to be. Sometimes if it's been a long day, you end up with something like this. That's a mangled travesty that you could sleep in, I guess. <laughs> What's the difference here? One of these is using the instructions and getting a desired result. The others may or may not hit that result, even though they're all starting with the same pieces. This is kind of what happens when you get a log image. You can think of this as kind of the tent that's packed away. The colors are all compressed into that log image. And now it's time for you to set up the tent. And so you can do it yourself by adjusting a whole bunch of colors and messing around. And you can get a result that probably looks pretty good and will work. Or you can use color management, which will take these exact instructions to rebuild that image and rebuild it that way. So let's add a version here. So this is just manual color correction. And I'll reset this node and I'm gonna put on a color space transform, which is a way to do color management. And this is Canon C log two. And if I have my color management settings set right, then this is going to give me the most accurate image on my screen to what the camera saw when we shot this. So here's doing the color ourselves, guessing. And here's what the color should actually look like if all we're doing is reversing that log. That's a big difference. Now, is one of these wrong? Not necessarily. But they're giving us really different starting points. And the one where I just messed with the colors has a little bit of my creativity kind of mixed in there. Which is fine, but I didn't really mean to do that. All I was trying to do was get rid of the log image. And so I'm kind of accidentally putting style into this image that I didn't really mean to put in. The other thing is that it took a couple minutes for me to actually make this image look like this. Whereas with color management, all I'm really doing is just kind of applying a preset. And then the work of reversing the log is done almost instantly. Now that's not to say that I wouldn't rather the image look like this. I just want to be intentional about adjusting that image and adding style when it's time to do that. I don't want to accidentally do it. I'm going to reset this, take my color space transform off, and let's open up our clips again. And now we're back to where we were. So that's kind of why we need to color manage. How the heck do we actually do that? There are a lot of ways to do it. You can do it with a series of color space transforms like I just did here on this node. But honestly, until you get a little bit more advanced, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Here is the best and easiest way to color manage just about any kind of footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. Again, I have a timeline here with a whole bunch of different log footage mixed in with some Rec. 709 footage. And I can color manage this entire timeline by doing a couple things, switching into color managed mode and then setting the input color space for all of the clips. Here's how we do it. Down in the lower right, click on this settings cog right here. That'll bring up our project settings. We're gonna go to color management 
And right here where it says color science, the default is DaVinci YRGB. Basically what this means is that we're not doing any kind of color managing. We're just letting the colors be what they are. What we're gonna do is switch this color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed like this. And if you really wanna keep things extra simple, you can just go down and hit save right now. But it's gonna help you with all of your future projects if you just tick two more little things here. I'm gonna uncheck automatic color management and then here where it says color processing mode, go down to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Now, what the heck does that mean? If you really wanna know, leave me a comment and we'll talk about it. For now, suffice it to say, this is extra awesome quality mode, okay? Make your color management look like this, all right? You can pause it here, take a screenshot and just match these settings and you'll be good, I mean, for just about anything. Once you have your settings set, just hit save. And then look, nothing happens. <laughs> That's because we only did the first thing of the two things we need to do. We set our project settings. The next thing we have to do is for any footage that we want to color manage, we have to give it an input color space. What is that? That's this right here. We need to tell Resolve what flavor of footage we're using for each clip, okay? Essentially, what camera did we shoot on? Now, for your own projects, you're going to have to track this down. Either look on the settings of your camera or talk to the person who shot the footage. For this demo media, we very nicely put the input color space right here at the bottom of all of the clips so you'll know exactly what to pick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the media pool and select any clips that are of the same color space. So these two cowboy clips, these are both shot in Blackmagic BMD Film Gen 5. So once these are both selected, right click and go down to input color space. And then we have a list of all of these different cameras and color spaces and everything. And so we're just going to pick the one that matches. So this is Blackmagic Design and we're gonna go to Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. Boom, now check this out. Now we have these beautiful colors instead of the log colors. Ooh. Now these Rec. 709 images, we don't need to color manage those because they already look good on screen. Let's switch over to this next one. Somebody handsome sitting in a chair. This is Canon C Log 2. So person sitting in the chair, right click, input color space, Canon, Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log 2. That's the same thing, Cinema C Log 2, like that. Boom. There we go. Next, we have Panasonic V Log. So go to this one, right click, input color space, Panasonic V Gamut V Log. Boom. All of these are the same. So let's look at these. These are all Ari log C3. So let's select all of those. I'll just hold shift, select all of these here in the media pool, right click, input color space, Ari log C3, boom. There we go. And these two, these are both S log three. So let's select both of those, shift, right click, input color space, Sony, S gamut, three Cine, S log three, boop, like that. Those look good. And this last one is red log 3G10. So we'll select this, right click, input color space, red, wide gamut RGB log 3G10, boom. Now check this out, this is so cool. Now that we've went into color manage mode, you have to be in this mode or you can't do this, all right? And then we went to all of our clips here in the media pool and right clicked on each clip and set its input color space to the right camera settings. Now that we've done that, all of our clips look nice on screen. Isn't that cool? So that's the very first part of color grading is you have to manage your colors so that you have a good starting point for doing your color grade. Now, does it mean that each one of these is going to look perfect, look super pleasing? Not necessarily. For instance, these shots are pretty dark. We could probably boost this up a little bit. It's not going to necessarily look amazing, but the colors are going to be as accurate as possible to how you shot it. So if you underexposed it a little bit, it's going to be underexposed. If you nailed the exposure, like in this one, it's gonna look pretty good. But now we have a great starting point for all of our clips and none of them look weird, and we're not messing around with the colors trying to guess how to reverse that log. We have a great image where we can actually start being a little bit more creative and adjust our images to look really good, this time on purpose. Make sure to get this footage with the link down below and you can practice color management as well as color grading and you can play with this and use it for anything you want. It's our gift to you. I hope you found this video extremely helpful. If you have, let me know. Put in the comments, okay? 
but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much pretty much what you need to know when it comes to color management. All right. So now you got no excuse. I don't want to see you manually messing with colors. All right. On a log image. This is not it's not cool. It ain't cool, yo. <laughs> okay, bye.